Hello and welcome to Sport This Morning. I'm Cecilia Amogbe. It's great to have you join us again. I'm Tara Salam. And of course, Austin Okonakwa will be joining us from Abuja. Let's get started with the show now. We're starting with 10 days to the Olympics. How ready is Team Nigeria? What are the tickets for those athletes who are not here, especially those that are based abroad? will be ready midweek that's what the sports ministry is saying and of course from august the first team nigeria will start moving into the olympic village okay also on the show uh today fina that's the swimming international swimming buddy the armor has fallen i mean seven russian um swimmers have been barred uh, from the real 2016 olympics <laughs> definitely i mean they're yeah. working you know, yesterday <laughs> i was talking about if they had enough time you know to actually uh, make sure um um athletes you know that are tainted with drugs do not compete at the games and uh, we have an answer uh, from fina already it's easy for them what they have to do just look at the ones that have <laughs> doping history and they tell them look and, you're not coming and the ones <laughs> that their names appeared on the uh, McLaren, McLaren Water Report. So it's definitely yeah. so easy for them. And also on the program, we'll be talking about Big Sam, Sam Allardyce. What's he up to this time around, especially concerning England players? He says he wants to work on them psychologically to see how the big money they earn in the English Premier League can actually transfer mm -hmm. into international stage, that the pressure will not be so much and most other players. Yeah, I mean, uh, Big Sam's era is officially on the way, you know, after it was unveiled uh, to the media. And um, for me, uh, I know a few people that still think it's underwhelming, uh, but uh, because England decided to stay local, uh, there's no other uh, candidate for me they, when they decide to stay local. I mean, Sam Allardyce is a, very, is a modern coach by every, you know, Standard. means. Exactly. He was one of those uh, coaches that, first of all, um, embraced um, technology, sport science, incorporated sport science into his programs. And um, the people that have worked with him, uh, including Austin J.J. Okoche, can <laughs> testify to, uh, that. to that. So, yeah, we wish him good luck. We'll talk a lot more about them. Um, uh, big Sam uh, later in the show. We'll get started now with the Olympics. Yeah. 10 days to the time and of course most countries are already moving in from Russia to Australia and of course those ones that are not moving in, they're trying to see how possible they can actually start moving in. But first we'll start with what's yeah, happening yeah, with to Russian swimmers. Yes. Seven of them would not be participating at this Olympics. It was expected. We know so many athletes are going to miss out because mm -hmm. of the stringent rules, the kind of street rules that IOC gave. Yeah. Instead of having a blanket ban, they said no. International bodies can decide which of the athletes can compete. Just come out with your own rules, rigorous uh, uh, testing and everything. Checks, um, yeah. And, and also we have our first uh, set of uh, casualties, uh, if, if I can call them that. And, you know, uh, reigning under meters and breaststroke champion, uh, Yulia Efimova, She's on that list, um, big, big uh, setback for her, but then uh, she's broken the rules um, before and that's why she won't be allowed uh, to compete uh, at the games in real. So um, I expect other you know, um, sporting uh, international bodies you know, to come out, come out with these uh, lists um, as we urge closer to real. Yeah, if you can just see the list of the swimmers that have been, you know, outlined, you know that these swimmers will not be part of it, either some of them actually involved in uh, uh, doping issue in the yes. past, the Finnish seven-day ban, and also some of them were actually indicted in, uh, in, in, in that particular uh, list that they talked about. That's uh, the, the McLaren's report. They actually listed some athletes that were there in the report. You can have just the slides of the seven swimmers on the screen, but what we're seeing right now is just a, a thing I'm banning them, and these are some of the athletes that have been swimmers that have been banned, so she would not be there. Yeah. But I mean, I mean it, it, it's really not a good time for the swimmers at all. I think why most of them were actually celebrating that, look, they will be going to the Olympics. They didn't know that the international body is going to come with different rules that will prevent them yeah. from going. Too bad. Too, Too bad, bad for them. Hopefully, you know, the, uh, the colleagues, you know, in all the sports will, you know, take a cue, learn from this. Um, you, can't, um, you can't afford uh, to cheat your way to the top. Uh, if you do that and you get and you escape with it initially, uh, you're going to get caught eventually. Yes. So, um, yeah, bad luck. <laughs> bad luck, that's the way it is. Okay, another swimmer, we talked about her yesterday. Uh, she, uh, not a uh, swimmer this summer, an athlete. Yes. You no, know, 800 meters specialist, the whistleblower. Stepanova. We talked about her yesterday that she would not be going to the Olympics. But right now, she says she just wants to challenge that. 
Yeah, interesting. You talked about it yesterday. I know you said it was you, you didn't find the, um, the decision fair, uh, which is uh, I understand that. Uh, you think after helping uh, with the investigation, after blowing the whistle, you know, uh, she was looking for a bit of compensation, uh, but she's not going to get it because of the uh, IOC's, um, you know, criteria, which is um, very strict. And I actually agree with it. But she wants to challenge the decision, and she wants the uh, ban to be reviewed uh, so she can compete as an as an individual, you know, at the real games, yeah. You know, it, it's going to be difficult for her right now because, you know, when IOC came up with that uh, story, the look, once you've served a ban, you just finished serving ban, you're definitely yeah. not going to go. I think that's the reason it actually affects her. But she says she wants to take it up. But how many days does she even have? Exactly. So it's she just the time, is, time is not on the it's side sticking, at all. Yeah, time is not on the side. Not. I mean, if she would go uh, to the court of arbitration for sport uh, to do all this now, uh, I don't think... Uh, she has enough time to actually uh, get to the bottom of this particular one. Uh, Yulia Stepanova, uh, that's her name, she actually thought she was going to go to Rio after uh, the International uh, Association of Athletes uh, and the IWAF actually yeah. you know, accepted um, uh, our application to race you know, as an indi individual in Rio. But um, it's not meant to be uh, anymore because the ISC says um, once you fail the doping um, test, uh, it's a no-go for you. It's a no-go even when you finish seven-year ban. So that is the reason she will be missing out. But she is taking it up. We just hope that she will be... I don't know what's going to happen. But then if she's able to succeed, I don't think so. Because if it's coming from IOC and she wants to take it up and say, look, but if, 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 if there's actually a pronouncement saying, look, if you've been involved in certain things, you will not go. I yeah. don't think she'll be able to uh, no, win it uh, at yeah. all. So she, I think she should just forget about it and just focus. <laughs> no, she can give next. it a try. Okay, yeah. it's a number, so she can actually give it a try. <laughs> I don't think she's going to have that. Okay, next, so move on to what's happening at the Olympic Games at Village. Village yeah. I mean, yesterday, the uh, Australians were moving it. They said they can stay. They were actually... Uh, stay in the hotel close to you know their hostel where they were supposed to stay because of leakages and all that. But right now, they shared the mission. She's really, really happy talking about Kitty. She's happy about yeah. the fact that look, progress has been made so far and the fact that look, uh, the, 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 the Brazilian government actually you know decided to start repairs and everything. So by yeah. Wednesday, that's tomorrow, they'll definitely move in. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, I was said it yesterday. I mean, uh, I didn't. Ex I think um, a meal was made out of the situation. Yeah, you understand some of these things, um, uh, the plumbing works had to be fixed. And it, it wasn't really any drama for me. And uh, uh, she's come out, that's the head of delegation for the Australian Olympic team, has come out to say um, progress is being made and it's fantastic. And expect her to move back into the Games Village uh, in the next uh, couple of days. So after Australia, it's good that they're in Brazil already. And uh, they're not far away, too far away from the Games Village. All they have to do is just there. Uh, Take a bus and uh, <laughs> go back to where they're supposed to be uh, with their fellow athletes. Yeah, definitely. I think since they're loving the progress, they're definitely moving Wednesday, according to Chef the mission. Let's listen to her. Today, we have had three floors that are now complete. And as we were walking out of the village, a whole crew of cleaners were walking in to clean those three floors of apartments. Australia has a total of 15 floors in our building 23. We expect three more floors to be handed over to the cleaners tonight. Then by this time tomorrow, or the close of business tomorrow, we expect our entire building to be complete, ready to be handed over for a final sparkle clean, apart from seven apartments, so that's around 30 beds. And there are still some issues in those apartments around leakages that will take one or two more days. So fantastic um, progress today. The workers that we were um, that were with us today have been absolutely really good. They've been working very hard. They're very skilled, and we're very very happy with the progress. So, looking like according to our plan, that we will be able to move everybody in on Wednesday. Okay, they're moving in, and let's come back to Nigeria. What's happening to Nigeria? Of course, yesterday the sports minister met with the president of Athletics Federation of Nigeria, and of course. Some, uh, uh, some officials from the elite departments in the sports ministry. He wants to find out who actually sent that email that made athletes to go on social media and started raising funds that will make them travel down to uh, Brazil. But right yeah, now, but something... Okay, time. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> let's forget about that. That's done. That's done with now. The minister has come out to say uh, that was never the case. The Nigeria Olympic Committee, uh, President Abu Gomez says, is totally unaware of such a, uh, of such a directive. Uh, so let's move on. 
minister saying right now that the tickets are um, already uh, for the athletes uh, to go to Rio. So for me, that's what we should we should be talking about now. So yeah, it said midweek. Uh, the midweek we're talking about is it this week or next week. But I think it should be tomorrow because that's midweek. And tomorrow is, uh, what date is tomorrow? 27th. And of course, athletes will start moving on the first. So it's definitely going to be from tomorrow. The tickets will be ready to be sent to them. Uh, the, the question we actually need to ask most of them is this. Are they going to start, I mean, get the tickets, start traveling from where they are down to Nigeria or straight to Rio? Or everyone is going to move together? That's the question we really need to ask uh, the sports ministry because right now they are now in charge of the athletes and even, of course, the NOC. Because when you ask ask Federation President, they tell you that, look, we really don't know much about this. It's all about NOC now and the sports ministry. Where yeah. are they going? Are they going to move together? But they said they will start arriving from uh, August 1st. So it simply means that they're not going to go together. Yeah, we'll find out. We'll find out. I mean, the fact that we're even talking about this is, um, is very uh, frustrating. Uh, we know the preparations issues is well What's documented under? already. Now we're talking about traveling issues. Should never be the case. But it's what it is now. Um, the, uh, what we know for sure is um, this athlete will travel to Rio to participate um, at the games. And uh, whatever happens afterwards, uh, we'll come back to uh, analyze yeah, yeah, that's the way it's going yeah. to work because right now with them saying, okay, your tickets will be ready midweek and you're going to send it to them wherever they are. Are they going to come down to Nigeria? We're going to have all of them moving together. Uh, some of these questions we don't know, but we know the basketball players will definitely want to leave from straight from exactly, uh, uh, yeah, the, Los Angeles yeah, yeah. or Las Vegas down to Rio. Yeah, that's August after, press, the, they the, are playing in USA. That's the last game. Uh, Houston, Houston, that Houston, one. So, so that's the last game, their last preparation so before yeah. they move down to Rio. Athletics is not going to start immediately. Yeah, so, so. Uh, you know, remember uh, the technical director of Athletics Federation of Nigeria was talking about the fact that they actually want athletes to go uh, to go into close camping and everything, maybe somewhere in Portugal or somewhere yeah. else. But right now we know that may Come not on. be possible. It's <laughs> so, looking very unlikely. Like, on, exactly. So we just want to wait and see if there's any more. I also want to wait and see if uh, you know, if you're by still right here, you know, at the national stadium and, and everything. Well, it's really, yesterday I said it was looking pretty because I just wanted to, you know, something interesting that we can talk about. But right now, well, even most of the athletes you asked them, we said, okay, we don't know when we are going to Rio. So it's really not really looking good at all for Team Nigeria. Well, you guys can talk to us on Twitter, of course, on Facebook. What do you think about Nigeria's preparations for the Olympics? How has it been? I mean, how come athletes just don't know what's happening with the Olympic preparations and also when they're traveling? You guys can talk to us. And what do you think if with all this treatment and everything, if we can get two or three medals oh, at the Olympics? Yeah. And also, we will talk about a FIFA visit in front of his visit to Nigeria, two-day working visit. Yesterday, he met with uh, President Mohamed Buhari talking about transparency and all that. And of course, we met with other FA president from Africa, and also the members of Nigerian Football Federation invited him over. You know what they've done and everything they put in place. And also yesterday, they owned the 13 exhibition game and everything. People are actually saying the stadium was empty. Maybe it have been better. But then it's just to showcase to him what we've been doing. We're going to short break now. When we come back, we'll talk more about that and what Infantino has been doing in Nigeria.